AM 1380, KZTS, Sherwood, Little Rock, FM 105.5, K288EZ, FM 103.3, K277DP, Rejoice, Little Rock's Gospel Experience. The following is a paid program here on Rejoice 1055 and 1033. The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect views and opinions of the staff or management of Salem Media Group or Salem Little Rock. It's time now for Midday Matter here on Rejoice with the broadcast of Network of Believers. Lunchtime Uplift with Pastor Eugene Whitmore and Lady Teresa Whitmore. The Network of Believers Church is located at 1111 West 7th Street here in the city of Little Rock. Here's Lady T and Pastor G. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings. This is the day. It it is the day. The Lord has made it. It's the day and we are rejoicing in it. No, guys, know this for sure, that this day when you woke up, you had a whole new bundle of Mercy, Mercy yeah. and a whole new bundle of grace yes. ready and waiting for you to take charge of what's going on. Um, we're happy to be here. Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we are happy to be here. And blessings, as you said, on blessings, on blessings, on blessings, on blessings. It's a wonderful day. It's a brand new day. We're excited about it. Uh, we're asking that you guys will share. Uh, share this video today. Share, 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 share. Share again and share again and share again. There's a word from the Lord. We're calling the day. It's a good day. It's a good day. It's a good, it's a very, 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 very good day. Share, share, share. Let's pray, Lady T. All right. You do an affirmation. Okay. And we'll go and get into this uh, word today. Father, thank you so much again for all of your blessings. Every last one of them. They are good because you have given them. Lord, I thank you so much for this time of renewal, renewal, renewal. You are renewing the minds of your people, and they are seeing things as you see it. And we are thankful that you have included us in this time, included us in this season. We are thankful, God, we're living life because of grace, and it's a great life. It's a great life. We're we're thankful. We're just thankful to you for being our Father. We're thankful for always being, again, mindful. You are mindful of us. And we know that you are. Yes. And you're a real good daddy. Mm-hmm. And, and we just thank you for uh, every day being as just like Christmas. Thank you, Lord. Because our expectations are going to the next level. Hallelujah. And you are blessing us to see all that you promised us. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. I shall not die. I shall not die. But live. But live. And proclaim the works of my Father. And proclaim the works of your Father. I shall not die. I shall not die. But live. Live. And proclaim the works of my and father. Proclaim. And they are many and they are great. And they, <laughs> <laughs> many and are great. I want to start. This is called a it's a good day. Mm. Now you gotta declare. Yes. You you gotta declare. You gotta you gotta make an affirmation. You got to speak to the situation. Mm-hmm. You have that right. You have the right to speak to uh the situation. I want to jump into this. Hey, share, 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 share. Thank thank you all you guys for tuning in. Thank you. I see my brother in here. Uh, who, which is a blessing, Apostle John Delaware. Blessings to all of you guys that are here. Uh, thank you so much, Apostle Latasha. Blessings to you, uh, Donna Stevens, all you guys that are in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and Lady T and I both really appreciate you guys. Now, let's jump into, there's a word from the Lord. There's a word from the Lord. There's a word from the Lord. And I'm not just saying that just to be saying it. I'm telling you, uh, stay with us today. Mm-hmm. I want to speak into the hearing Lady T, there are, there are people that are struggling right now. And, and you know, we're getting all this bad news, and we're, we're hearing about the economy shifting and gas prices going up because of the things that are happening. I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. Uh, the, the, the God that took care of you before is going to take care of you again. Come on. Don't complain. Co- uh, complaining is the sound of unbelief. Mm-hmm. It's the language of unbelief. So when I start complaining, it declares that I don't believe. So if gas prices go up to $8 a gallon, mm-hmm. you thank the God and praise the God that has the power and the resources to supply. So he can make it $8 a gallon seem as if it's $2 a gallon. Come on. So don't just, just allow the Lord, allow your God to be God. I'm going to uh, Genesis chapter 1. 
Is it one? Yeah, I want to do Genesis chapter one. It's a new day, and it's a good day. It's a new day, and it's a good day. Genesis chapter one. I want to share this. This is an encouraging day. Again, you have to declare what the day is. So oftentimes, we're going through a modification period. We are victims of our vernacular. Mm -hmm. What we've been taught and bred to say is causing things to happen in our life. And we think it's the devil, but it's not the devil. It's the, we're being victimized by our vernacular. And so we got to change what we say if we want to change what we see. That's right. And this is not more prevalent than inside the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. You've been given things to say that has caused you to be victim. Because the word of the Lord, as God has declared it in Scripture, has a, 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 a time signature on it. Okay. And, and most people are already going, God is the same. Yes, he is. But he's declared in his scripture. Well, when we come up with the word called rhema, mm -hmm. we, we're suggesting that there is something that is specific for the time. Okay. Not old bread, but to today's time. And so if I can preach rhema, I must understand that there's a time signature on something. Mm -hmm. Faith coming by what? Hearing. And, and your problem with developing faith for the present challenge is the fact that you haven't heard a present word. My God. You keep going off what you heard way back when and way back then, and the Lord is trying to shift you into another level of hearing so that you won't be just the victim of your vernacular. Because mm. language uh, creates culture. Mm -hmm. And the culture we live in uh, of unbelief is because the language has been the language subliminally of unbelief. We, we have no guarantees when the Bible is full of them. Mm -hmm. We don't approach anything as a guarantee through the word of God. Now, it's a good day. So the reason, one reason why the day is so good is because God is shifting what we are hearing. And now he's allowing us to live what we want to live because of what we are declaring. I need to go there. So, so Genesis 1, verse number 3. So since it's a new beginning, let's go back to the beginning. All right. This is a new beginning. I won't be here long. I just want to set this foundation. Okay. I have something else I need to declare. But I need to show you it's a good day because you have declared it. Now, watch this, lady. T. It's a good day. Now, Genesis 1, verse number 3. I want to read that. I want to read 3, 4, and 5. And then I want to unpack real quick because I'm sagging way in into Psalms 91. That's where I want to land. Okay. Psalms 91 is where I want to be. Psalms 91 is where I want to be. Now, watch this. And God said. Now, you've been teaching this for at least a year, almost a year and a half. Uh, at early morning affirmation. And God said, now here's what God said, let there be what? Light. Mm -hmm. And God says, let there be light. And there was light. Yeah. That was light because God said, let there be. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now that's interesting. God said, let there be light. And there was light because God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. For first says, and God saw the light. Okay. God saw what he said. Mm -hmm. And God saw the light. Why did God see the light? Because he said light. I'm going to see what I said. My God. And I need to be saying it until I see it. And God said, and there was light. And, and now watch this. And God saw the light that he said, and then he said, it's good. God saw the light that mm -hmm. it was what? Good. good. Now watch this. And God divided. Mm -hmm. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now again, day, now I could go whole, I can go all the way down to the fourth day. Uh, uh, really, God is not saying that this light that he saw was the light that we think mm -hmm. of when we think of new days. We think of new days as the sun rising. Now, the sun was not created until the fourth day. Okay. But days begin at declarations, not sun. Mm -hmm. Now, 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 that's why I say weep and may mm -hmm. endure for a night. But if I declare that I'm not waiting till a new sunrise, mm -hmm. I'm starting now. Because days start at my declaration. My God, God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And so when God saw the light that he declared, he didn't look for the sun. He looked for the manifestation of what he said. Are, are we tracking now? Gotcha. Listen, looking, I got to look for the manifestation. If I say, let there be light, that means there's illumination, revelation, and information. Mm -hmm. That's how things begin, with yeah. revelation. Mm -hmm. And then God illuminates, and then he calls this the information to be uh, 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 come to into fruition in our life. And so now that's the beginning of your brand new day. All right. So God said, let there be what? Light. And because he said it, he looked and he said, there go light. And he says, whoa, that's good. That's good. Now watch this. Watch this. And God delivered, divided. And God, what did he do? He divided the light from the 
there are darkness, there is darkness and there is light. Now, remember, God divided between the two. So if I want to live in day and I want to divide it from the darkness, I got to go to God who reveals all things. Mm -hmm. That's where the dividing comes is from God. Now, the fifth verse says this. Watch the fifth verse. The fifth verse says, and God called the light what? Day. day. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Mm -hmm. This is a good day. All right. But what this text declares to me is that I need both of them. Mm -hmm. I need both. I need both what? I need both the darkness mm -hmm. and I need the light to even declare I'm in a new day. Now, stay with me because this is going to bless your life for the rest of <laughs> your life. So, days, watch this, days start with darkness. Don't you ever doubt this. Days always start in the dark. Wow. Because in the dark is where you get your greatest creative ideas. Many of you were on your bed in a dream and God dealt with you. Because day, a new day, start. In the dark, there are many that is cursing their darkness and they are cursing their creativity because a new day starts in the dark. So when God says, let there be light and it was good, mm -hmm. he had to speak to the dark. Days begin in the dark. Now stay with me. They begin in the dark. So God said, let there be light because it was dark. Because when you get your greatest idea in the dark, which come in the dark, mm -hmm. there must be a day that comes. And days are the illumination or the lighting of things, right? Why is this important for me to understand? It's because Jesus declared that you must work the work while it is day. What work should you work? Hmm. The work that you got in the dark. Hmm. The idea that you got in the dark. Dark is important because that's when the developmental period of me is, is when I'm living in the dark days. So God said, let there be light. When God saw the light, he said again, whew, this is Good, here's the Lord. Woo! Mm -hmm. This is this is good. This is good because day is when I work. Mm. I, I want to see, see. See, many of you are, are bubbling with ideas. Now God is about to create the day for your idea. Mm. You, the light is about to shine on you. Your idea is about to be illuminated. Uh, what you've been waiting on. Here's the day presented. God is bringing you out of the dark places into the light. Yeah. Because day is when I go to work. Get ready to go to work. I'm prophesying in, to somebody. In other words, I get the ideas in the dark. Hmm. And God would allow it to be brought to the light. My God. He's bringing it now to the light. To the light. light. There is something. Listen to me. There is something that took your dark days to birth. You wouldn't have birthed this unless it was in the dark. You've been cursing your dark, but this is the key to you having the idea. You had to sit in the darkness for a while My God. and get this idea. Mm -hmm. But now it's about to be brought to the light. Listen, the text says God divided yes. the light from the darkness. He divided the light from the darkness because both, both of them, both of them are necessary. Both are mm -hmm. necessary. Listen to me. Your darkness it's just as necessary as your light because the darkness is where your idea come in. Now, you know, we sit in the house a couple of days because there was a day of iciness. And, and when these people had the uh, opportunity to sit in the house, they, tea, they had the opportunity to sit in the house, what happens? What happens? You start getting things done that you were too busy to do. So you can't discredit those times of disruption. Hmm. There's some dis disruptive days don't discredit the disruptive days because it's disrupting this 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 cycle to give you an opportunity mm -hmm. to get something done my god <laughs> you can't discount the disruptive days because they are disruptive they disrupt the cycle they disrupt the cycle and god is allowing cycles to be disrupted because you are now in a brand new day so he divided the darkness he didn't get rid of the darkness mm -hmm. he didn't say god uh, decided to get rid of the darkness. He said he divided the darkness from the light mm -hmm. because the dark is where the revealing is. The light allows you to reveal what was revealed in the dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I say this all the time. You can walk into a dark room and with it being so grossly dark, it appears to be nothing in the room. Mm -hmm. Then you go and flip on the light switch 
and automatically the room seems as if it filled up all of a sudden. Yeah. Did it did it did it fill up all of a sudden or was it already there? Come on. It was already there. That was just a revealing with the flicking of the light. That was a revealing. So so God created both mm -hmm. day and night. He called the light day, he called the dark night. Mm -hmm. And he divided between the two and said, Both of them are necessary. Both are necessary. So I want to I want to share something. Because when I think about the night and I think about the day, I think about this time of movement that we're in right now. Now, there are some dark moments, but we got the rest in the Lord because he is the master of the darkness. Mm -hmm. Now, we've given that title to Satan, and now we're living uh, 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 in fear because when it's dark, we think, <laughs> we think, oh, this is a, a, a moment to be mastered by our adversary. Mm -hmm. The devil is alive. Yes, sir. The devil, God called night, night. God called the darkness. So don't let him take advantage of anything. When you are in God, all times are times of creativity, are times to believe by faith that God is going to do something. So God masters them both. He masters the day, but don't think he's not the master of the night, the time of creativity. We've been allowing Satan to master our time of creativity. That's why our imagination is running wild because we assumed mm -hmm. that he was the boss of the dark. When God says, no, no, I divided. I, I, I picked the two. I'm not going to let anybody master what I have created. Mm -hmm. Now, Exodus chapter 13, I want to talk about the dividing mm -hmm. of day and night. And watch God, how he operates in them both. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to the Exodus chapter 13. Exodus, have y'all shared? Have y'all shared? Have y'all shared? Exodus chapter 13, Exodus chapter 13. I'm at, I'm at Exodus chapter 13. I hope you're there with me. I hope you're going with me. Go to Exodus chapter 13. I'm going to read in uh, the, the 13th chapter. That's what one, that's one I'm reading, 13th chapter. Exodus chapter 13, chapter 13, the 21st chapter, I'm sorry. Now listen to this, Exodus 13, verse 21, because we're talking about night and day. Okay. Night and day, night and day. Now. And the Lord, now look, 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 look at this text. Look at this text. I wish I could have put it up on screen, Lady T, so they'll believe me. Sometimes they don't believe because they'll see it. Now, watch the 21st verse. It says, it says, and the Lord went before them by day. All right. <laughs> and the Lord went before them uh, by day. Look at what it said. And went before them by day in a pillar of cloud. Hmm. I don't think you want to miss what I'm about to say. Okay. I don't think they want to miss this. And the Lord went before them by day. So the Lord was with them during the day uh, in a pillar, listen, that's what they said, in a pillar of a cloud okay. to lead them mm -hmm. the way, to lead them the way. And by night in a pillar of fire. Mm. And by night in a pillar of fire to give them what? Mm. Light to go by day and night. He did not. Say that the night was a time that I leave you. Uh -huh. He says, I'm leading you in the dark. Actually, the dark leading is the best leading mm. because you have to totally trust me. When you get in light, you think, I got this. But in the dark, you got to trust me because you had believed or someone told you that the devil was the master of the dark. So you're scared, but I'm telling you, I will lead you in the dark. Close mm. your eyes. Close, close your eyes. Close your eyes and move at my guidance. Close, close. Shut your eyes. Shut your eyes. Shut your eyes. That's too much dancing in your dark. Mm. Close your eyes. Close your eyes to you. Mm -hmm. But you're going to realize that I'm here for you. I'm here with you. I'm here, to, I'm here to save you. I'm here to save you. I'm here to save you. I got 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 you. I can hear you saying it right now. I got you. 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 Mm -hmm. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Mm -hmm. That the days that, that, that the Father, that we think that are, are days that he's, 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 he's left us, he tells us, now, I got you. I'm still here. Now, now for those that, that, that missed us because our internet went down, Lady T, I want to say this again because I need them to hear this once again. Now, in Exodus, the Bible says, because we know God created both day and night. Mm -hmm. Nighttime is our time of greatest creation. We discredit the night because we thought that that was the time that the enemy had the power to thrive over us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and we thought that he had the power because we have deemed him. And, and there again, language creates culture. What we're saying is what we're seeing. And since we believed, because we were void of revelation, that the enemy was the master of the dark, God says, no, I made the dark mm. and the light. And I divided between the two because each one of them had a specific reason in my creation. Yeah, good. So reason. your dark days, mm -hmm. your dark nights are the creative time. That's when God drops stuff in your spirit. Then he creates day mm -hmm. so that you can work because uh, uh, we must work while it is day for when night cometh, no man can work. And so he's clear on what he desires. Okay. And now he says, now you get clear on it. Mm. You know that your dark days was necessary because I had to drop something in your spirit. <laughs> and then we talked about the disruptive days, in case y'all didn't hear it, that when days of ice come, they're disruptive, but they're only disrupting a cycle. And God is saying now that the cycles are disrupted. Now I can give you what I had planned. <laughs> I can give you I can give you what I planned. I had to slow you down uh, so I can get you in a position to upload, upload. This, this is a time of upload, 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 upload. So you're going to get something in idea. Now, now Exodus uh, chapter, again, th chapter 13, 21 again, it says, And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of, uh, of cloud. Mm -hmm. He guided them in the day. And then it says, At night mm -hmm. he was a pillar of fire. Yes. Interesting. Interesting, because he says, I'm not leaving you at night. Hmm. Close your eyes at night, because I want to lead you. I want to lead you. I'm going to lead you. Now, and then the 22nd verse says this, and he took, and he took not away the pillar. Stay with me. I'm going to get into the, the here, here comes the good part. I hope, I hope the people come back. I know we lost you for a second. Here comes the good part. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor by the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm getting to Psalms 91. Mm -hmm. It's a good day. This title is It's a Good Day. I'm getting to Psalms 91. Since God gave us both night and day. Mm -hmm. Now, hear this. Hear this. Since the Lord gave us both night and day, he will always show up opposite of the scenario that we face during the night and during the day. Hmm. Now, watch this. He shows up. Watch this. Uh, opposite of the scenarios he shows up opposite of the scenarios uh, uh, we face as an antidote to our calamity because he's there to lead us in those times now let me say it again let me say it again god is the leading of the day and he's the leader of the night and he always show up in the day and the night he shows us he shows up as the opposite of the scenarios that we face mm. Now, this is interesting because I'm talking about day and night, and I'm talking about elements that okay. come. Mm -hmm. And he is the antidote to the calamity of day and night, okay. both of them, because he created both, right, and divided. Now, watch this. So by day in the desert, it is hot. So what does he do? He put a cloud up there to make sure you got shade. God was throwing shade on you <laughs> <laughs> by day to make sure you got a cool. That's cool. You know how it's real hot, and that cloud comes and covers. Yeah. Whew, it's like a beautiful thing, right? Yeah. So at nighttime, at nighttime, he was a pillar of fire. In other words, those 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 real cold. You know, we was driving uh, through the desert. You remember in uh, New Mexico, right out of right outside of Albuquerque, and it scared you because you woke me up because you thought the sun, the moon was touching the ground. But we noticed that what made it really weird was the fact that how it would go from hot to cold real fast mm -hmm. in the middle of that desert. Yeah. And can you imagine at night the days being hot and then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the nighttime it get cold. Now he's got a he's got a, a pillar of fire that you can warm. So he always shows up in the scenarios of day as a cloud to give you shade. And then in the dark nights, cold nights, he shows up as fire. To give you heat and warmth because he says i'm the master of them both i'm the guidance i'm the protection in both of your scenarios when you understand that i am the creator of it all what a what a what a god we serve what a god we serve now now i said all of that because i wanted to segue lady t into psalms 91 because it's a good day it's a good day it's a good day it's a good day psalms 91 and i'm about to pray out my radio uh, uh, people because I, I want them i want you guys that are listening to me via radio to understand 
that God is the God of all daytime situations as well as nighttime situations. Yes. This night period of your life is your created time. Don't yes. give that. Don't give it to the devil. Mm. Don't don't spend time conversating with Satan or fighting with Satan. Language creates culture, and since the language has been the language of warfare, we have a culture of fight of warriors. Mm. <laughs> Now, what you're actually seeing is the burden of a, of a mantle being placed up on you, and it's heavy, and it's, and, and it, and it, and it's actually, uh, 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 what's the word? It's, it's going against what you've always gone toward. Hmm. So now you think it's the devil resisting you mm-hmm. when it's a different weight of glory that's shifting you. It's not the devil against you. But since the language has been warfare, we, we, saw, we see all resistance as the devil, when God says, no, you have shifted and I've given you the weight of a different mandate. You got the weight of a different mandate. Hmm. Let's pray there for the radio. Cause, hey, Facebook, stay here. I'm, I'm coming back. Father, thank you for our radio listeners. Uh, uh, thank you for their nighttime, the creative time, and then it's translation into daytime to begin to work on what you placed in their spirit. Healing is theirs. Healing is theirs because they're following your direction. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Can I get an amen on amen, that? Amen. 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 So, so, so let's move now. Let's move, Lady. Now, Psalms chapter 91, because we done declared the day and the night mm-hmm. belong to God. Day, daytime is the work time. Nighttime is the ideal time. It's the time that I get the idea to go to work home. All right. <laughs> so both of them belong to God. Now, listen to what Psalms. 91 says, if y'all can hear us and see us, uh, uh, tell us, uh, um, tell us you're here, tell us you're here, because we've been having a little bit of technical issues, and we don't want this word not to be heard. Amen. Now, Psalms chapter 91, Psalms chapter 91, listen to this lady T. I was telling you on the way over here that the Lord, just this morning, dropped something in my spirit, man, and this was, whew, this, this, this Psalms 91, this is why it's so important. That you don't take it and, and believe that I, I, I got everything I have to have. That's one of the most detrimental things to think is that I, I already know what I know. Who are you going to be left behind? Who are you going to be left? You're going to be so left behind because you already know what you know. Mm. Why you are serving a, a fastly shifting and moving God. Come on. You're, you're moving. Now, let's go back to Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Psalms 91. Now listen to what Psalms 91 says. Psalms 91 says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. Are you getting some? Uh, yes, we are. They're saying they hear me? Yes. Okay, great, 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 great. He that dwelleth in the, we are familiar now. He that dwelleth in the secret place, secret place of the most high God, of the most high shall abide. You see how I said most high God? Uh-huh. That was just something that I, mm-hmm. I've always mm-hmm. said. That's mm-hmm. why. The Lord keeps showing me, you got to pay attention now because you're going to add to. Mm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high. most high, watch this, shall abide under the shadow. Listen, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, listen, he that abideth in the what? Secret place of the most high shall abide under what? The shadow. The shadow. The shadow. The shadow. Of the Almighty. So the secret place is under the shadow, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now, let's unpack this because I just gave you Exodus chapter 13, verse 21. Mm-hmm. Now, Exodus 13, 21 says again that he led them by a pillar of cloud by day, mm-hmm. pillar of fire by night. Now, what this declares is the fact that the cloud was the shadow. The cloud, now, now watch this, shadows are created when light goes through something that block. It creates a, mm-hmm. a shadow. Now, listen to me now. So he went before them as a cloud that cast a shadow. Mm-hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. The shadow. Now, 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 I asked the Lord, what is and where is the secret place, because hmm. I got to know. He says to me, those that will allow me will allow me to direct their path. Now, the cloud 
in Exodus 13 was the guidance of God. He mm -hmm. led them out mm -hmm. by a cloud that cast a shadow. All right. So he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow, shadow of the cloud that guides me. Mm. See, God says the secret place is those people that allowed me to be their guidance. Mm. <laughs> and in this day of turbulence and the time of trouble, we want the Father to be our guidance. He's, 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 he's our protection, right? He's our protection. Now, now watch this. Under the shadow, hmm. or when I looked at this, I looked at the word overshadow. Okay. Oh, because he's up over. Uh -huh. Overshadow is 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 defined by uh, uh, something becoming more important than something. Okay. <laughs> so the secret place is when what God desires become more important than what I desire. Come on. The secret place is when I yield my desire to. God's desire. It's 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 when I I, I I abide under the shadow is a picture. Now watch this, Lady T. Watch this, because this is gonna be important. When I abide under a shadow, it's a picture of what? Darkness. Hmm. 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 He that dwells in secret places of the heart shall abide under the shadow. In other words, you shall abide in the darkness. Because hmm. <laughs> if you're under his shadow, it declares your closeness. Now, watch this. The reason why the Lord gave me this is because he says somebody is interpreting darkness as them being far from me. Wow. He says, but actually, it's the closeness of them to me that is creating the darkness. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm abiding oh, under the... Now, when the, when the shadow comes, <laughs> it creates what? Mm -hmm. That's why he says, I am the God of the darkness. Because it's the secret place. They are abiding under the, the further you get under the shadow, the Ooh. darker it becomes. My God. There are many that are declaring that this is a, a horrible day because it's a dark day. God says, no, 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 no. The darkness is because of the closeness. closeness. Yes. Now, watch this, Lady. Sometimes you can't really get a vivid picture or focus on something because it's too close. Mm. There are some people saying, I can't see right now. And they're thinking that it's because of how far it is. Mm. But God says, no, 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 no. I'm all over you. Ew, my God. <laughs> I'm all over you right now. I'm, mm. I'm, <laughs> I'm all, look, 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 the Lord says, I'm all over you right now. I'm, I'm, I'm all over you. It, it, it seems like it's dark. But you, you have defined darkness as a time of demons. No, it's the time of your abiding under the shadow. It's, it's really a secret place. You are dark because you're in the secret. Now, remember, your greatest development comes in the dark. Mm. But you've got to agree with it. You've got to understand it. You've got to know that it's dark for a reason. It's because of God pulling me in, not pushing me out. Mm. Now, 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 this is an unfamiliar place because you've always defined the dark as an evil place. So you didn't seek any answers there. Mm. You know, I had to wait till I come into the light. No, mm. God says both of them are important for this developmental. Yes. I need you to see the dark as close, not as a time that you are to be dominated by a devil. Mm. And your perspective changes everything. Your perspective, you can't see. Lord, I don't see anything because you're so close up on it. Mm. Now he needs your undivided attention as he guides you because he wanted you to close your eyes from the get-go. Come on. <laughs> You're looking all cross-eyed because it's so close. Mm. Jesus. He says, close your eyes. I'm, I'm, ready to, I'm ready to take it. So, so abiding under the shadow means that I am being overshadowed. Mm -hmm. What God wants becomes more important. That's what overshadowing is. You, I become less important. Mm -hmm. And allowing God's desire and desire. In other words, I put purpose over my preference. Mm -hmm. I'm dark because I'm so close. I'm so close. And the secret place is me allowing, allowing God to direct me in this time called dark. Are they still here with me? Still here. That, now, 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 please hear me. Hear me. You are under the shadow. It declares your closeness. The focus that you are void of is because he's all over you. Mm -hmm. Y'all have become one. Let him, let him, My let God. him do what he does. Mm. Let, let him do what he does. Now, 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 verse two, verse two. Psalm 31 is where I'm at. Verse two. Let's see how far we get with this lady. Too. Verse two says, I will say of the Lord. Yes. Now, listen to what verse two says. 
I will what? Say mm -hmm. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. What what will I say of the Lord? He is my refuge. Yes, sir. And my fortress. My God. My In God. him mm. will I trust. Mm -hmm. I will now, now, now listen to me. That this this particular text took new meaning this morning. He says, I will say of who? The Lord. Don't say of yourself. Okay. Psalms 91, 32. Don't say of yourself, say of the Lord. My testimony is not about me and what I've done. Now I'm talking about what the Lord done. Mm. So he says, I will say of the Lord. Now, here's his here's, here's, here's secret, his here's secret. And I, and, I, and I found this of most important, 18. Psalms 91. Now, when people deal with Psalms, they always think about David. And that's great because he did write a, couple, a lot of good ones. Okay. But Psalms 91 has no heading. If you look at Psalms 91, it doesn't say like many uh, uh, mm -hmm. who's the author. Mm -hmm. So many have ascribed this to David. But I think that would be an error to ascribe this to David. Why? Because the rule of, of, of Psalms, how do you determine who is the author? You go to the Psalms before and find its author. And then you go to the Psalms after to see its author, and then that will determine who this author is. Hmm. So this one right here is after Moses has been ascribed to a psalm. Now that's important because now when I look at this 91 Psalms and I say, he that dwelleth in the secret place shall abide under the shadow, then that Exodus 13 mean a lot to me hmm. because he was a pillar of cloud by day mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and a field of fight. So that means that this is walking through a wilderness experience. Moses mm -hmm. was this author. So, so stay with me now. And so when, 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 when he says, I will say of the Lord, I will say of the Lord, this is Moses now not having excuses any longer. He says, I can't say, I can't talk. Now he said, oh, it's not about who I am and what I can't do. I'm talking about the one that can I will say of the Lord. In other words, I will convince myself that the Lord is the fortress. Mm. I will convince myself that the Lord is the help. Not me. I'm just following the guidance. If I follow the guidance, he's going to lead me <laughs> to David. He's, if I follow the guidance, what is he going to do? He's going to lead me to what David said. Mm. Now, now watch, watch this. What did David say? He leaded me to beside the because he's time, it's time for him to restore my soul. Mm -hmm. But I'm not re restored until I allow him to guide me in the right places. <laughs> so Moses says, I will say, mm -hmm. I'm talking good now. Okay. I ain't got no stutter no more. Hmm. I was stuttering when I thought I was the one that Come was going to have to create this. Yeah. But since I found out it's God, I'm talking plain. I will say of the Lord. When I refused to say something earlier, I didn't want to say nothing. But now I'm saying of the Lord because I had a couple of experiences yes, with him in the dark. Come and on. I seen that he got. He yeah. is my yes. refuge and fortune. My God, my God, in him will I trust. I am convinced that the Lord is my fortune, especially those days when I don't know what to do. Hmm. In those days that I have no idea, he's guiding me. I'm closing my eyes to what I see. And allow him to guide me. So he says, I will say. So, so, so that goes back to the beginning affirmation. Psalms 118.17 says this. It says, I shall not die. Mm -hmm. I shall live and say and declare the works of the Lord. In this dark season, I'm winning. This is a good day. 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 It's dark, but it's good. Third verse. Third verse. Look at what third verse says. Late Surely. <laughs> it's a guarantee. Surely, listen to it. Listen to me. Listen to me. The, the, the scripture says, look, 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 you go to your Bible. You go to your Bible. And look at what this says. The scripture says, surely, surely, surely. Oh, man, that, 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 that right there. Surely, surely he shall deliver thee from the what? Mm, pestle. Snare? Mm-hmm. Of the filer. My God. He shall deliver thee what? Mm. From the snare of the filer. Listen to now. This, this, this means something. He shall deliver you, you from the snare of the filer. Of the filer and from the noisome pestilence. pestilence. And from the noisome pestilence. Now. Now let me unpack. Can I unpack? Now. He shall deliver me from the snare of the, of the filer. Now. 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 What a filer is, 
is a master hunter mm. of big birds. Mm. He, and I, oh, I was telling this story. Oh. I was telling the story about back when I was a boy, how I used to trap those birds. You know, I, t- I tell that story. So you were a fowler. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I put that stick on there and put some food under there. When those birds that are hungry can't peck in the ground, they go up under the thing and I snatch that thing. I, I was a master at catching those birds, right? Mm-hmm. So then the Bible is, is painting a, a, a vivid picture of he shall deliver me from the snare of the master hunter. Mm. So, so, so now that, 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 that is showing us this, this picture of this adversary who's walking to and fro mm-hmm. and through it out the earth, trying to snare me. Now, now, now <laughs> the filer always works in secret because I, I put the string on there and hide behind the tree so that they wouldn't notice me from the tree. The filer changes his traps and methods. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare. So the snarler, the, 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 the filer works in secret. He changes up his methods. He entices us with pleasures and profits. He, he knows how to work. He knows how to work. Now listen to me. He, the filer often uses bad examples. he got somebody planted in your life for you to follow. Ooh, this is so Bible. So the Bible says that he shall deliver me from the snare of the filer and from noise and pestilence. Now, now, now watch this. This is speaking about COVID. Okay. Noise and pestilence is viral disease. Hmm. He shall deliver me from the traps of this life and also he shall deliver me from the sicknesses of this life. Wow. <laughs> now, snare of a filer. We were talking on the way over here, and I told you, I said, we're going to talk about this. The Bible says in Proverbs 6, uh, uh, Proverbs 6, verse number 2. Now, here's what the Bible says there. Thou art snared mm-hmm. by the words of thy mouth. Thou art taken by the words of thy mouth. Ain't that mm-hmm. what the scripture said? Thou art snared. So, so now, you are being trapped mm-hmm. by your word. It's it's the greatest trap of the enemy. It's to cause your mouth to be out of alignment. Mm. So you become a victim of your vernacular. Mm. What you are saying is the thing that's preying on you. Wow. What you're saying. So he says he shall deliver you. Now, now, what does this mean? He is causing me to walk out of all of those word curses. Mm. <laughs> I've been I've been I've been I've been preaching in 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 in, in, in being snared by the only curse that are applicable now is a word curse, and it's only a curse because I have said something that I am obligated to live by. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can murder my miracle with my mouth. I, if it comes up, if it comes up in my conversation, it is automatically applicable to the creation part. If I keep saying it, I'm saying, even when I have been delivered by the blood of God, even though uh, Christ has redeemed us from all curses, if I'm still saying it, I'm obligated to live under it. So mm-hmm. the snare of the, 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 the master hunter, the way he catches me is through my mouth. Language creates culture. Mm-hmm. Once I said something, it becomes the culture I live by. Now what happens? My children are snared by the same filer. Wow. What happens? My grandchildren are snared by the same filer. Now, I would call it generational curses when it's actually generational cycles, cycles. that is created by what I say out of my mouth. Mm. So we are snared by the words of our mouth. Thou art, as the scripture says, thou art taken by the words you say. So if I want to stop something, I need to stop saying stop something. Stop it right now. If I'm stop, if <laughs> the only way... I can stop saying it is when I take it out of my heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, is something I had believed. And the only way I can shift what I believe is when I shift what I'm hearing. Hmm. And I'll say it again. Uh, 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 uh. The only way I can shift what I believe is when I decide to shift what I hear. Hmm. Say it again. I'll say it again. The only way, the only way I can shift, the only way I can shift what I believe is when I shift what I'm hearing. Mm-hmm. The only way. So I'm snared by the words of my mouth. So he's, it says again, it says, he shall deliver me from the snare of the filer, the master hunter, from the noise and pest. Now, again, 
a filer, hear me, here, here this lady to you, in, in, is, the, is a picture of a master, now specifically, bird hunter. Now watch, watch what the enemy is trying to do. The, the scripture says in Isaiah 40, 31, it says that uh, they that wait upon the Lord mm -hmm. shall what? Renew. They have strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up like wings of an eagle. There's a filer that's trying to take your wings in this time of coming forth. You've been waiting, and now it's time for you to take flight. And there's a, there's a master hunter that is trying to snip your wings by what you say. He's trying to determine how high you fly by what you are saying. He's trying to determine the trip by what you say. He's trying to determine the magnitude of your impact by your mouth. You have become a victim of your vernacular. Wow. You become a victim of what you've been saying. You've been saying something that has caused you to be limited. Now, this is not Ooh, the work, the, the filer watch this, is doing work in the church. The filer, the master hunter is doing work in the church. This is the place that the, the, the greatest amount of resistance of change is because we govern church by seniority and popularity. Mm -hmm. the, the, the key to a word being implemented in church it has to come out of the mouth of a popular person or a person that's senior. The problem with that is that in kingdom that doesn't work hmm. because God, in, in, through Jesus, life of Jesus, when the question was asked, who is the greatest? Mm -hmm. uh, he says, you are now operating in a system of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. That's not a kingdom application. So now when the filer, which is, as, as Moses said, he's going to deliver me from the snare of the filer. Now, mm -hmm. the way that he's constructed a snare of the filer, filer is the master hunter of the big bird. Mm -hmm. The snare is the methods he used to catch him. All right. I am snared. Now, now watch this. Watch this. Because I need them to see this, Lady T. Snared by the, the, the filer means that he, woo, Listen to me, listen to me, because God is about to do an intervention. He's about to do an intervention. He's about to do an intervention. Look at the word. Look at the word. Look at the word. What does it say, Lady? Surely he shall what? Deliver thee from the snare mm -hmm. of the filer. What is he saying? He says, you already been caught. Hmm. What is that? He, surely he shall what? Deliver, Deliver me. me. My goodness. You don't even know you've been caught. But he says, this time, I'm about to deliver you from what you've been called into. You are snared by the words of your mouth. So now, watch what the Lord says. I'm about to allow you to get free of the word curse. Mm. This is the only place I, 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 can, I can even validate in New Testament where a curse is allowed to live. Mm. It's by the word of your mouth. If your word has not changed, your life is lived in cycles. Mm. So, 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 Proverbs 6 says again, Thou art snared. Listen to what the, uh, the Psalms 91 says. The snare of the filer. You are snared by the word. You are a victim of your vernacular. Hear me? Because mm. we, we're not going to let this devil get by with deepness mm -hmm. about all of this. We're not going to let him get by. Now, the spirit of a prophet is subjected to what? The prophet. the prophet. Now, be very careful when you're overwhelmed to say something and it's a byproduct of what you live continuously because hmm. you'll begin to speak and the enemy will come in in that process. Now, now he is good at it. Don't think I'm belittling you because you allowed him to sneak in. Now, watch this. That was a prophet in, in, in 1 Kings 17, mm -hmm. Elijah. He prophesied on the 17th, in the 17th chapter, first verse of 1 uh, Kings, there will be no rain according to hmm. my word, right? Yes. What happened? No rain. Three and a half years, no rain. The 18th chapter is him coming back to speak again. Why is it that you prophesy that there's no rain? And see the intervention of God. At, that in, at the advent of that prophecy, it was the greatest prophecy of a prophet of his time. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting that, after prophesying a, 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 a change, 
and God endorsing the word. Now you have prophesied again after destroying 850 prophets. Now you are asking the Lord to take your life. You have a spirit of suicide on you. Read it in there. I'm not, I'm not make, he, says, he says, I am no greater than my fathers. I, no, I heard such a horrific uh, a revelation of it by a notable one, that, but, but I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> but he, he, when he runs before Ahab to the gate of Jezreel, Mm -hmm. he, he looks at him as he goes in the gate, tell Jezebel what I've done. Now, his heart is that I'm just trying to show people who the real and true living God. He mm -hmm. thought he had done a great thing. Mm -hmm. So he ran. Now, notice how important it was for him to, 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 to get the endorsement of. Mm -hmm. He runs before the chariot, the Bible said, and leans on the gate of the city as King Ahab go in. Now, tell her, I'm just trying to obey God. But when she gets the news, she says, if I have not done to him tomorrow what he has done to my prophets. The, the, the Bible says, when he saw what she said. Saw what she said. When she saw, when he saw what she said. In other words, <laughs> he, he created pictures from something. He's not even in conversation with her. He began to paint pictures of what he, in his mind, disrupted. Now, I'm, I'm trying to build a picture because sometimes we think because I got a gift, I can't get disrupted. Mm. And I don't, I know. So, so here's a prophet that closed heavens in the heavens and then opened up the heavens. And now he's asking, he's got a spirit of suicide on him. Mm. We got to be very careful. We got to be very careful. We got to be very careful because we become victims of our vernacular. Mm. Now, now, again, I brought that up, Lady T, because many think if somebody is gifted, that means that they are on point. Mm -hmm. No, he had to be rebuked by the God that gave him a word. Mm. He says, listen, I got 7,000. I got 7,000. In other words, get your act together or I can move past you. Mm. Because we can become snared. We can become snared. And the enemy, does. that's why the Lord says that the gifted won't facilitate this next move. It's the ones that are continued in intercessory. Watch this. There are people that your ministry seem to be boring to everybody, but you're going to be given the responsibility to facilitate the next level. Yeah. You are given the responsibility. Now, what we should do, Lady T, right now, for all of us, all of us should be right now going before the Lord and leaving our gift at the altar. Mm -hmm. Lay it down. When you get to the altar, you lay down gifts because you are in the wrong place to be declaring your greatness. Mm -hmm. At the altar, you lay down. Don't come to him, Graham. You, you are using the very thing you use on people with God, and he's not interested in it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I say something? Very important, Lady uh, because we're going to have to be transformed into what we call worship services. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a transformation. Worship is not a slow song. It's not how you speak in tongue. Worship by the law of first mention in Scripture, the law of first mention means the word that is mentioned first time in Scripture says the president for all time in Scripture. So God is never saying what God never said. He's using, he might escalate what he already said and build upon, mm -hmm. but he's always saying what he already said. Uh -huh. God's original intention is always his final decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Worship in scripture is mentioned for the first time in Genesis chapter 22. I'm off script, but I'm going. It said, it was said by Abraham that hold my mule while me and the boy go up to worship. Worship is not a slow. They were not going there to sing a slow song. Come on. They were not going there to do anything other than for Abraham to take the very thing that he had waited his whole life to get and to give it back to God. That's oh, what we're, if you are not willing to give back to God, the thing that he's given you, you are not even in a worship neighborhood, and the devil can cause you to sing as many slow songs as you desire, and never be in a moment of worship. When we come to the altar, lay your gift down, because you're before the sovereign. Now, watch this, because worship is not a song, so, oh my God, <laughs> the Bible never said, and God never required, Woo, watch this, God, the scripture says he's seeking worshipers. Mm. It didn't not say he's seeking worship. We said it. Wow. He didn't say he was seeking. 
worship. Why is this important for me to understand? It's because the God that created heaven and earth from nothing was God before you told him he was. <laughs> He's going to be God if you never say it again. We, uh, we, uh, we keep mixing this up. God is God because I said he was. No, he's not. He's God because he's God. He never said, I want to uh, worship. He said, I need worshipers. Why is that important? Because the worship ain't for him. It's for the purpose, person that's doing it. It's you beginning in your worship to magnify him in your own mind because he's already big and is. That's why he says I'm seeking worshipers. I'm seeking people that are already made me big in their mind because I'm already going to do what I'm going to do. Mm. So we, we let, allow the enemy to walk into our services and we spend a long time uh, uh, saying that we are exalting God. And he said, okay, but I'm already God. <laughs> this is not for me. This is for you. And th th we got these cliches that we're going to give God a magnificent worship because it's going to give the devil a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Listen to me. This, this stuff has got to end. The, the, your worship is not giving the devil a nervous breakdown. But what it will do is stop you from having a nervous breakdown. So, so he says, I'm delivering from the snare. Now, this snare has invaded the church because we are snared by our teachings, what we have been taught. The snare of the phyler is, is now, I'm supposed to be an eagle that fly high. So a, a phyler is one that uh, a hunt big bird. Mm -hmm. And so now I have been waiting, and now I'm to mount up on wings as eagles. But the, the phyler now is trying to snare me, and they snaring me by the words of my mouth. What I've been taught is causing me to be limited in where I soar, the height of my soaring. The enemy is loving it. He's loving it. And he's saying, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Go ahead, go ahead, keep it going, go ahead, go ahead, keep it going. I don't care about you coming in here hollering and shouting. I don't care because... I need you to understand. Here's, here's what the Lord is saying. I need you to understand. That's why we had conversation. And I'm going to echo this, Lady T. I can't help it. I asked the Lord, why do you do this to me? And he says, you better hear me and do what I said. That's why there's a shakeup coming again. Hear me. There's a shakeup that's coming again in, in, in the church. There's a shakeup. It's coming again. Hmm. Hebrews 12, the Lord dropped it. Remember I told you, I said, Lord, I don't want to do that. I don't want to, but there's a shakeup coming again. Mm -hmm. And this time, as Hebrews, uh, I, uh, let, can, let me read it. Uh, and, and, uh, whomever hears, yeah. I'm going I'm to deliver my son. Come on. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 25. Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, verse number 25. It says, see that ye refuse not him that speak it. See that you refuse. For if they escape not who refuse to him, him who spoke on earth. We're talking about Exodus chapter 19. Much more shall not we escape. Listen to me. Shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speak it from heaven. Mm -hmm. Speak it from heaven. There's a voice that is coming that's ringing through that is alien to the voices that we hear inside our sanctuary. There's a voice that is speaking from heaven that is alien from the voices that we hear speak in our sanctuaries. That's why it's so, it's so in, in, our, in our priestly moments, we are getting uh, 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 visitations that we're about to run from because we're so unfamiliar. Zacharias, Come on, Zach. <laughs> your, 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 your credentials are perfect at church. But when visitation time comes, you are unfamiliar and you're ready to run. And, and the angel saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm here to show up. I showed up to, 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 to drop in your possession what the Lord has been promising. But you're not familiar enough. So when he starts shifting in the voice, we start running. So he says, see that you don't be so busy about your typical worship that when I come and speak, you don't hear me. Mm. Much more shall we not escape. Mm -hmm. 26 verse says, who voice then shook the earth. Mm 
Mm. Talking to Exodus 19, the mountain is shaken. Mm -hmm. The mountain is on fire. Who forced then shook the earth. But now he hath promised. He hath promised. Here's a promise to He promised us, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, Exodus 19, but also heaven. Mm. I'm shaking heaven this time. Now, that's a vivid picture or a metaphor or a sign that not only is he shaking our physical operations, but he's shaking our beliefs. He's shaking what we had gravitated to in our worship beliefs. Mm. He's now saying, I'm shaking that up too because what you had called me was not me at all. This is what the text said. And this word once more signifies signified the removal of things that are shaken as of things that are made, that things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receive a kingdom which cannot be moved. In other words, what he says, the shaking of your life right now is him saying, I'm, I'm, I'm ridding you of all of the things that are superficial, mm -hmm. all of the things that are not conducive for your call. Mm -hmm. You can resist God if you want to. Come on. But this is a time of shaking. This is the time of removal. This is the time that God is coming to those that he has chosen and say, now I'm shaking again. Now, the reason why the Lord says there's a shake up in the, in, in the church is because there are some voices that are influencing the culture and, and the voices refuse to, to, to hear in this season. And so they are causing people to still walk in a place that God has left. And so he says, now, I got to smite the shepherd that the sheep may scatter. Again, I don't want to say these things, but I have to be obedient to the word of the Lord so that the sheep can get into the proper place of hearing because it's time for the, it's time right now. The world needs us. We, we are so, we think that we have the option to tell God not right now. We think we have the option to say, that's not good for me. I got other things going on. This is not that time nor Come season. On. Yes. This is not that time nor season. We cannot declare to God what is good and when is good. He says, it's good now. I need it 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 now. And so the Lord is saying, he's speaking, uh, there will be shakeups. There will be shakeups. There will be shakeups. You know, we, we, we have gotten to this place that our personal, our personal quarrels and qualms have diluted our decisions so incredibly that, that if I think I don't like somebody, then I think I, I can say, you know, I don't like them. Don't, don't let them do this. And still say that I'm operating under an anointing when my personal, oh, they didn't say that right to me. They dis, they, they, they. They didn't honor, they didn't do this, and so I don't like so I'm calling all of my friends to say to them, you know, don't let this when 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 God has anointed. Really? Really? There's a shaking. There's a shaking. There's a shaking. Father, we thank you today for your word. We thank you for this opportunity to speak your word. Thank you for the hearers of your word. We thank you for what you're doing in your word and through your word. There's a people that are walking in grace. In the time of trouble, they're going to see you more vividly than they've ever seen you before. Your protection is going to be on them like never before. And I thank you. 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 Thank you for this season and time of greatness in you. I thank you for the time that you are delivering from the snare of the filer. Lord, you're shifting the vernacular. You're changing the language very rapidly because culture has got to shift now. And Lord, you're gonna, we're going to see the hand of you uh, uh, in, in such a way that we've never seen before. I thank you for it. 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 Oh, man. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 This is a different season. This is a different time. The vernacular has shifted. Don't be guilty of remaining the same when God has shifted. Language creates culture. And when your language has not shifted, you keep, uh, again, I said this earlier, lady, to you, and I'm going to say it again. Because the language in, in the church has been the language of warfare, all we know is that. Everything that spews out of our mouth is warfare. Mm -hmm. When it's really just the burden of a, another level in 
a calling that the weight that has that is so different from what you're accustomed to the resistance is not the devil it's the weight of a mandate mm -hmm. on your life and if you don't know it if the language has been warfare everything is going to become the devil everything and so now all we see and all we go after is devils everything it's just that when when the lord says no please no it's time for you to the lord has been gracious to you and he desires you now he desires you it's time to answer your call my god it's time to answer the call no more excuses it's time to answer the call now what the the third verse of that 91 chapter says what lady it says that he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. That means that you have already been caught by the fowler. It says he surely he shall surely he'll deliver you from what you've been caught into if you want him to. Come on. This is the day of deliverance. He says, Surely he will deliver you from. I've always read that as if he's he's protecting me from the fowler. He says, No, I deliver you from the snare. You are already I'm caught up. Mm. You already been trapped. And it's amazing for you to be trapped and not know you're trapped. I'm I'm not talking to I'm talking to people in the church. I'm talking to, to men and women of God that have been trapped. We all, we all, we all. I'm not speaking as if I've already obtained. I'm speaking as one that the Lord says, now shift and you're gonna see my hand. Shift and I'm gonna show you something. Shift. And that's a grace for him to uh, highlight that it's time for you. Oh, yeah, you think you're going doing great things. You're getting the applause. Don't let the amens confuse you and think that you are on the right trail because men are amening you. Mm. The enemy will implant as much cheering section as you need to stay on the wrong track. My God. You know there's some cheers going to happen if you're on the football field or on the basketball court and you run in the opposite direction into the opponent's field. Uh, 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 you shoot the ball in the basket of the opponent mm -hmm. and the score, you know that you're going to hear just as a loud a cheer as you would from the home team. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you would decipher or determine that the cheer of the enemy is the cheering of God. I see it happen. Mm -hmm. Somebody shoot the other day, accidentally shot. the the the. He was tipped it in the ball up and it went into the opponent's basket and the crowd went crazy. That was a cheer. Now, he can determine that that's the applause of being successful, hmm. and it was. But who is the success for? That's the key. So we, we got to get this. So we, we thank the Lord today for his word. Amen. It's no time for play. For those of you that have seen the grace of God in your life, he says, I'm calling you. I'm not letting you go. Either. I'm not letting you go. I'm delivering you from the snare of the fire. You've been caught up for a season, and now grace says you can be, be delivered of it. All you got to do is hmm. agree. Agree. It's difficult it's difficult, but it's doable, and he's ready. Let's move forward in faith. Amen. Move forward in faith. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in. Tune in. You can share this even after we are off. Lady T, I'm going to tell you a secret about Lady T and I. We Sometimes when the Lord declares what he wants us to say, we say, Lord, we don't want to say that. <laughs> nope. Just not what we want to do. But we have to be obedient to God. We have to say what God wants. To, and uh, we would admonish you, say what the Lord has said. Mm -hmm. Say what he said in spite of what it causes you or what it seems like it's going to cause you to lose and you're going to lose out. of. Say what the Lord has said. And he says there's nothing that you have lost that he won't. No man will give up lands, houses, mm -hmm. uh, 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 this Mark 10, anything that you give up for kingdom's sake, that you shall not receive in this life. Yes. This life. Not in the life to come, but in this life, the Lord says, I may, I give you everything because of your obedience. Amen. Thank you guys so much. Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Uh, I'm teaching Sunday morning. The Lord has already given it to me. Uh, Self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. Self-fulfilling prophecy. Wow. I want to share something about self-fulfilling prophecy. Since my mouth is a snare. The Bible says that Proverbs 6, that you are snared by the words of your mouth. When it says he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler, it's, it's something that you're saying that's causing you to live something. And now it's called self 
fulfilling prophecy because of what you said. You might have said it in ignorance, thinking you were saying it right, and now you are obligated to live it. And, and when you prophesy, a self-fulfilling prophecy does not relent because you are the bishop, because you're the apostle, because it's coming out of the mouth of one that is called that. So it manifests on that level. Mm -hmm. You said it. Wow. So you are obligated to live by what you said. All righty then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, for those of you that want to share, Here's, here's our share address, Cash App, Pastor G for NOB. Thank you guys so much. I want to say again, if you send to, to NOBC, that goes to church. That's church money. This is how Lady T and I are right here. All right. Thank you. And there are many of you that have sown. Thank you so much. Always. You made your seat multiply. Yes. Several times over. Yes. Several times over. Lady T, you don't want overtime. <laughs> so <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't want overtime. Wait. Thank you so much again. And thank you for tuning in on Sunday morning. If you're in the Little Rock area, show up. It's something to showing up. It is. And I'm going to share that in the message as well. All right. Who do we have in the house here? We got Ronda Royal. Ronda Royal. Pastor David Boyd. Now you, no, hold on. Hold on. Pastor Ronda Royal. Pastor Ronda Royal. Yes. Pastor David Boyd. Yes. Pastor Nolan Brown. Yes. Mr. Lee Clark. Mr. Lee Clark. Pastor Rodney Henderson, Grandpa. <laughs> Yes. Pastor Kimberly Sanders. Yeah. Come on, we got these pastors up yeah, now. Yeah. Khadijah Christopher. Yes. Kimberly Clark. Yes, hey. Yeah. Ida Mae Whitmo. Yes, Mom. Hey. Freddie McNeil. Listen, mm -hmm. Pastor Kevin Davidson. My sister Sheila Hardiman. Uh, uh, Jabari Williams in the house. Prophet Jabari. Uh, Andre Moultrie. Blessings, man. Sarah Devine. Sarah. Sarah. I bet you Sarah is smiling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apostle Latasha Anderson Who else? I think that's it That's all I see You see some other people that's it. Blessings to each of you guys We love you Thank you so much For tuning in Blessings We start with blessings And prophetic And we want to end with one Blessings, blessings On blessings Blessings On blessings Blessings On 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 blessings